In this video, I'd like to show you how you can create some custom 3D shapes using the shapes library and the extrusion function in vPython. The shapes library is a pre-built set of two-dimensional shapes. There's lots that are available. Uh, the one we'll be working with today is the circle. So by default, this is gonna create a circle of radius one centered at the origin. The only problem is if I press control two now, it's not going to show me anything because vPython uh, works in a three-dimensional environment and this creates a two-dimensional circle. Remember, a circle is a two-dimensional shape. So it doesn't have anything to show. So in order to actually have the circle show up, I have to extrude it in the third dimension. In order to use the extrusion function, I first have to give a path. So let's give this circle a path to follow. Let's have this path point out along the Z direction. So this is much like creating a path for a curve object. I have to give at least two vector points for it to travel along. So let's start at the uh, origin and move out along the Z axis. Let's not go too far. Let's just go 0.1 units along the Z axis. And then we come down here, we can use the extrusion function. So let's use extrusion and uh, we have to tell it which path we want and which shape we want to take along that path. So we're gonna give path equals circle underscore path. So that's the direction we're moving the circle along and our shape is going to be the circle. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the circle starting at, starting at point 0, 0, 0, moving it to point 0, 0, 0, 0.1 and it's gonna fill in all the space along that way with this circular cross section. So if I hit control two, now I finally get my visual. There's my missing 2D circle. But you notice it's been moved along the Z axis. Our Z axis is pointing along this direction. Excuse me. Our Z axis is pointing along this direction. And the circle has moved from 0, 0, 0 out along to 0, 0, 0 0.1. And you notice as promised, it's filled in all the space in between there. So it's like I've got many, many two-dimensional circles packed on top of each other along that uh, path direction. Once I have this extrusion created, I can modify it the way we're accustomed to modifying things. Let's call this a disk. Um, I can change its color, like I've been uh, modifying other things color. Let's make this one blue. I can also change its position, just like I've done before with other objects. Let's put this one off to the corner for now, hit control two to run. So there's our extruded circle again, giving us a disc. You notice it's been changed to blue and it's now located up here in the corner. Now I don't just have to go in a single direction on this extrusion path. I can also change directions on the path. So let's make a slightly different path this time. Let's take this one, copy and paste. This time we're gonna make an elbow joint. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. We're gonna move out along the Z axis. Let's make this step a little bit longer this time. And we'll take this and copy and paste. So now we're gonna have a third point. So we're actually gonna have two directions to our extrusion. First, we're gonna go from the origin out along the Z axis. Then we're gonna go from this point out along the X axis. So I can have my extrusion here now. This is gonna be an elbow joint. So instead of the circle path, we'll take, we'll take the elbow joint path and we'll use the same circle shape that we had before, control two. So here we get our elbow joint. You can see we start out again at the origin. We move out along the Z axis, just like we did before. We're just going farther this time. And then after that, we take a right angle turn and move along the X axis here. Now you notice that the circle rotates along the path of the extrusion. So when we're moving along the Z axis, the circle points perpendicular or is oriented perpendicular to the Z axis. When we move along the X axis, the circle rotates 90 degrees to point uh, along the x-axis. So it's perpendicular to the x-axis here. And I can continue that pattern along in a rectangle if I wanted to. I've actually got a little bit more fun uh, application in mind. First, let's move this guy over. Let's move him up to uh, negative one, uh, one, zero. There we go. That'll put both of those out of the way of our x-z plane. Because I don't have to have this path just consist of big jagged points like this, I can make it very smooth. So what I've done here below, and I'll uncomment this now, is created a circular path. So the circular path, we start out as an empty list, um, and then we're gonna be incrementing theta around the XZ plane. 
So we're going to be adding points to this path that are given by x equals the cosine of theta, z equals the sine of theta, and y equals zero. So we'll keep things fixed in the xz plane, and we'll be rotating around the x and z points. Uh, let's have this thing go around half a circle to begin with. Um, so we'll go from theta equals zero to pi. We'll increment theta just by a little bit, so we'll have uh, 100 points in a full circle or 50 points in half a circle. And then we're going to create this as a donut. So we're going to start with the same circle, and now we're going to go around in a circular path. Let's hit Control-2 to run. And so here we get our donut shape. It's getting a little crowded down here. Let's actually move these guys up um, another unit. Let's move them up to y equals 2, y equals 2, Control-2. There we go. Now we can see our donut better. So we've, we've taken this circle, and we've moved it around a path going from theta equals zero to theta equals pi. And you notice that, again, at each point along that path, the circle is pointing perpendicular to the path of travel. And what that means when you take very fine steps is you get a nice curved object like this. Well, it's curved looking. If we zoom in enough, of course, we're gonna see the jagged points there, just like we do on a curve object. Um, let's close this thing around. Let's change this pi to a two pi to get a full donut. And I've actually learned if you just leave it at zero to two pi, you end up with a very slight gap here where they're not quite meeting each other, so we can fix that. We'll just increase this by about uh, 1%, so it makes one extra step along the way there. There we go, now it's nice and closed in. And I like the shape because it really shows you uh, how good the uh, the lighting renders in vPython, because this is pretty cool. So once you've got these extruded objects, you can move them around, you can apply the euler crumber method, again you can change their color. There are a lot more options you can use with these extrusions. So for example, you can place holes in the middle so you can have part of it be hollow. Uh, but I'm gonna leave a link to the GlowScript documentation so that you can learn about those for yourself. Um, in another couple of videos, we're gonna return to extrusions to talk about the gear object. I know that's useful for people that like to work with gears in their rotational motion chapters in a physics class. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.